Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Tonight from the real Cancun, Paul and Jay are uh, both here from the movie. Yeah. Opened uh, last weekend and uh, made a couple million bucks. I think it was 2.3, uh, actually. But uh, Yeah, chump change. Chump change. I think uh, <laughs> it probably only cost what it cost to make. Do you have any idea? No so. idea at all. 47 bucks. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah seven bucks, a couple of quarters. Case some of uh, case of Schaefer, and uh, some water soluble lube. <laughs> and how long? So okay, so it was in Cancun. Have you guys, you guys are best friends. Yeah, right. yeah we you are. grew up in Los Angeles. Yeah, Inglewood to be exact. Yeah. Inglewood. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful country over there. <laughs> beautiful Inglewood. Drew, you spend any time in Inglewood? Any time, no. Almost right. as nice as Gardena. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I would drive through Inglewood to get to Gardena when I. <laughs> this is when I was remodeling a decorative box factory in Gardena <laughs> for uh, some years. Yeah. It's a bad time in my life. It's a nice but city, though. Yeah, you got out of Inglewood. Yeah. You went off to college. Yeah. And then how did you get signed up for the real Cancun? Well, um, me, I'm always trying to get on the uh, real world. So uh, I checked the casting uh, sites all the time, and they had a casting call at uh, USC. And I told him, you know, let's go down and check it out. Uh, at first, he, he was hesitant, so I had right. to drag his ass, put him in a trunk. Hmm. And then we went down there and did the casting call, wowed the people. And here, now we're here now. You know? And and how how long did it, well, first off, did it tape just last? Yeah, last March. And last so March. it was it was put together just over, oh, what what was the time period, a week or so? Yeah, uh, we were eight days in Cancun. Eight days, and you started filming the day you got there, pretty much, or yeah. on the way there? Just right off the plane. Soon you got off the plane. As soon as you got off the plane, Cameras. started filming. What, what were the instructions to you? Be yourself. Just go have a good time? Yeah, just, just have, have a good, good time. time. You know, We <laughs> couldn't talk to the producers. They couldn't talk to us. Just really? Be, be yeah. us. You know. How, how long um, after, how long did it take to forget about the cameras? Um, about a day. Truly about a day. About a day? Yeah, about a day. And then after that, it was like, you know, they're not even there. So Taiji you bump it to him, like, oh, I'm sorry. And <laughs> be like, whatever. And, and so and someone was mentioning this, and I thought it was true. You know, uh, many years ago, not too long ago, people get dressed up to go on an airplane. They put on a blazer <laughs> and an ascot, you know. And, and if someone was going to take a picture of you, it was a big deal. And if someone was going to film you, you had to act a certain way. Uh -huh. I mean, you knew there was a camera going. I mean, you'd go. That was before video cameras. Yeah, but I, I could even remember, like in the in the uh, later 70s, let's say early 80s, you'd go out front of the Radio Shack. There'd be the little video camera. There'd be the TV monitor in the window, and just st I'd stare at myself, <laughs> <laughs> like some primate, you know, just looking, trying to look at the thing, <laughs> looking up at the thing, looking at the camera, always seeing the side of my head, seeing if I could be faster than my head was. It was excitement to actually see yourself on on camera, but. I, I think a whole generation is now growing up sort of forgetting about it. Yeah. yeah. It's like when we did our first interviews on TV, we, we were caught looking at the monitors and stuff. And they're like, can you please stop looking at the monitors? We're like, it's just weird looking at ourselves, you, you know, know on for TV. For a couple of local kids, we, camera, television's kind of, kind of spooky. Now, yeah. have your, have your family members, your parents, have seen, have they seen the movie? Yeah. yeah. Both of our parents came to the premieres. What do yeah. they, what do they think? <laughs> my, my. <laughs> Mom. I'll tell you like this. When I came home that night, the locks were changed. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> on both of our houses. <laughs> my bag was outside. And Seriously? No, yeah. I'm just nah, 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 just playing. True, please. Come on. <laughs> I thought Bobby kicked his ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, uh, so it was seven, uh, seven, eight days of shooting. It just went straight through. It didn't really have, there was no storyline or anything. I mean, nope. I mean storylines were forming, but no one gave you any instructions. No. They no. just, let's put together the right people mix in a little uh, little booze yeah, and have Jose a good Cuervo. time. And have a good time. <laughs> little booze. Did you know what the uh, stories were going to be when you viewed the film? Or had you, you have any idea how it was going to all fit together? We no. didn't see anything, man. Just you just, yeah. When you went to see it for the first time, that was the first time. That was the first time. Yeah, yeah. You know, time. You, uh, you pretty much know that everybody's going to have their own, like, character, basically. Yeah. How, what type of person that, part, that guy were? Yeah, yeah. We didn't know. Yeah. You know we were yeah. just like, oh. Yeah. So yeah. How, did, how, how did it come <coughs> together? Were you happy? Did, yeah. Did you? Because we was, talked to a lot of people in a lot of reality stuff who say it was edited to make me look like an a-hole. Well, <laughs> uh, 
for myself, speaking for myself, I enjoyed my character. I was yeah. the comedian of the crew, but yeah, I don't that, know how he enjoyed his. Yeah, from, and I know from, a couple of my castmates, they were a little... Yeah, I'm upset. They didn't get a lot of time. I act, you know? Yeah, they didn't get a lot of time in the movie, or they were like, I don't act like that. Well, for me, I mean, I liked it. I mean, I came off like the guy that didn't get any action. Well, well, the girl got action. But 30 seconds action. of action. Did, yeah. uh, did, <laughs> did, you, uh, did anyone throw up? Did he throw up? Uh, yeah, but they didn't. I didn't throw up. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. There was throwing up almost yeah. every night. But and you guys, you guys have never been... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, I think that's David Allen Greer. Right? <laughs> you, you guys never... Uh, and you guys have never been out of the country before this, right? No, no. no. So you've never been to Mexico? No. Nope. They enjoy you like to go back? Oh yeah. If I had to pay for it myself, no. <laughs> no, we had to come out of our pockets, no. <laughs> no. We'll stay in Inglewood. <laughs> Not but, worth it. No. Nah. So all, all in all, good experience? Yeah. Great experience. Wonder, wonderful. Great experience. Oh, okay. Experience. People that haven't gone, they should check it out. A lot, Save them their I money. Think, I think a lot of people uh yeah. sometimes when they do this sort of uh reality T V stuff feel like they got duped or ripped off or screwed or whatever. You feel good? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. We do it again. We do it again. That's what I like. Cause like, that's what I want to yell at most of these people. Uh, what, what are <laughs> you going to? What, what were you going to be doing yeah. in lieu of this? Yeah. You're beating off, sitting <laughs> home watching scrambled porn. You weren't, <laughs> you weren't doing anything else, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. These so. guys are young enough. They don't know what you mean when you talk about scrambled. Oh, oh we, we know. I know. I know. Don't get it twisted. I know. Don't get it twisted. Come yeah. on, Drew. I'm no, sorry. No, we're not. We're young, but we know what's up. We know scrambled porn. <laughs> All right, let's talk to uh, Robert. Is 19. Robert? Uh, yeah, I have What's a up? question concerning uh, how you can track herpes. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I was at a party this weekend with a couple of friends, and we had made a beer bong, and mm -hmm. we were pretty excited about that. And um, we actually let some other people use it aside from our close friends. Mm -hmm. Sure. And a girl used it who was um, a little bit, uh, a lot of experience, let's say. Yeah. And we kind of all knew that. And we went ahead and let her use it, and then I went ahead and used it about 10 minutes afterwards. Mm -hmm. And now, um, about three days later, I have some sores in my mouth. Ooh, good times. <laughs> Bad times, yeah. 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 Um, well, a lot. How many people use the beer bong? Um, aside from my friends, but the three of us use it. You know, maybe you got to come down here and let me look at these sores. What? It's call, you're calling from the neighborhood. Yeah. You want to come down here and have Drew look at your mouth? Uh, that sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah. yeah, it's real serious. Right? Is this uh, uh, this isn't bogus? This is real? No, we'll actually, find they're, out. They're, they're small. They're uh, like almost like canker sword and Simon. Let me look at them. Well, sometimes I found because I used to do the beer bong with uh, just a regular garden hose, and sometimes that <laughs> brass fitting at the end can be a little tough on the uh, inner lining of the mouth. There, <laughs> dude. This is uh, Jay speaking. You there? Yeah. You guys knew she was uh, well, ex well experienced, and you still let her uh, drink off your bong? Uh, I, it wasn't my choice. She was just there. She's like, hey, guys, can I use it? And we're like, um, yeah, sure. And we just let her do it. Yeah, it's hard to deny it, to deny people the beer yeah. bong when yeah, the pe party's going. Yeah, how do you, you know? know? I find out. That Look, that's like it. a if, the peace pipe. That's the peace pipe of the uh, white man, the beer bong. If sexually that's our peace <laughs> pipe. <laughs> if sexually <laughs> you need some help, man. If sexually that's all we have. active people could transmit STDs this way, everyone would have everything. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Things are not really passed along this way. Yeah, but uh -huh. why not? You could get you could get oral herpes this way. I mean, maybe what he has, but yeah. it's you know it's ten minutes later. There's a lot of fluid flushing through there. It's yeah. what do you what do you think um, the heave quotient is on the beer bong? I say it's about one point eight for each heave. ten beer bongs done. One point eight vomit. Yeah, I was gonna say three beer bong per puke. I don't know. I my, I can't believe it's that high. Right. But it's pretty high, maybe two. Right. You know what I mean? And it's not a real vomit. It's not that I'm sick vomit. It's <laughs> went down the wrong pipe kind of immediately. Pipe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I've, uh, I've only done it a couple times. I'm scared I'm going <laughs> to bring it back up. Yeah. Oh, you guys see my Crown Royal uh, stack <laughs> on my I, yeah. Are we telling them to come down here? Sure. Go ahead. That's Sarah, always Sarah? a disaster, Drew. All right. Well, then don't. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. Peace. If he wants... Oh. Peace. Uh, he won't know what he's got unless it comes back, basically. Yeah. All right, Peace. Nice voice, Peace. Hmm? You're up? 16. What's going on? All right. Well, I'd called the other night. I had a threesome. Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> and you had cut me off, but my main question was, I'm keeping the baby. I think I haven't told my mom, but she's very open about sexuality, so... You don't know whose baby it is, though. No, but I decided I was wondering if I should tell both of them. You should tell both of them. W okay. One is your boyfriend, and the other is who? Neither of my boyfriend. Oh, that's right. Why would you she's not? A, oh, she's 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 a, oh
Um, you know, I mean, you know, it might not even be theirs, honestly. Like, oh my God, peace. What's going on? When were you sexually abused? How old were you? Um, uh, three times. How yeah. old were you when it first happened? Um, five. Five. Ooh. Okay. Do you, you see how this happens. is all the result of that? Well, I think a big thing is my parents, when they were married, were very open about sexuality. Like I've seen them having sex. Well, that only makes it worse. But the, the, how did yeah. I magically know you were sexually abused? Uh, you know, it's the chaos you create in your life, and the, and the bad choices, and the no boundaries. And All right, so how far along are you, did, did you say? Three weeks. Three weeks. How about a uh, nice abortion? No, I'm, I mean, I, I, I kind of want to be a mom. How about, you're 16, Peace. If you want to be a mom, how about waiting until you're an adult, and then <coughs> be a good mom, a, a, a capable mom? Well, my mom was 18 or when she had... Yeah, and look what's happened. Yeah, look what happened to you. Well, I mean... Been threesomes at 16. And watching well, your mom I have sex. I always like when people use their own horrible parents as examples. <laughs> My mom was only 17. Yeah, she's a junkie. She had 14 kids. She's in prison now. I'm what, what kind of... What, My what, parents what, were what, hippies. Is she Martha Washington? <laughs> no, no, my parents were hippies. I yeah, but yeah, your parents just, are horrible they, they parents. They traumatized you. It's, it's, they're really bad parents. No, the three... Um, Peace. You talked about her having sex in front of you and stuff. This like, the hippie the parents are a disaster. Do them. Like, the molestations, one was my grandfather, the other one was this, some guy. That has to be hey, your mom's dad. Hey, Peace, this is Jay talking, sweetheart. You know that's a big responsibility you're about to take on, right? Well, the baby? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the baby. Yeah, you're, you're no. truly not ready. Oh, even some of that moped you're thinking about <laughs> getting when you got your learner's permit. <laughs> You know, this thing's take Ooh, two strokes, you, you gotta oil the chain. And she smokes a lot of pot. No, I don't. I, I've never taken drugs. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You got that laugh. So you did the threesome sober? I have a lot of friends that has babies at a young age, and I, they can tell you right now that that is not a responsibility you want right now. No, well, I would, I, I would enroll it in the daycare. It, it's more, it's right. more yeah. than that. You'll hand it over to somebody else. Yeah, no you'll be a great mom. You just uh, punt the kid into the daycare <laughs> and go about your business. Why don't you punt it all the way over to the adoption services and then... Okay, and but there also, you I go. have another question. Yeah. Um, I have, like, visions of my molestations and I have sex sometimes. Yeah, those are called flashbacks. And I have sex very regularly and mm -hmm. sometimes, like... I'll, I'll just go to the point where, like, I'll let the guy do whatever to me, and I'm just, like, immersed in a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. That, those are dissociative experiences. Yeah, it's a post-traumatic stress disorder with dissociation and flashbacks. And that's, a, that's about as serious a psychiatric condition as you can have. Okay. And, and still not have a thought disorder. So it's, it's important you look into some treatment. Peace. Yeah. Uh, either have an abortion or give the kid up for adoption and get some therapy because of oh, all the I trauma. What's that? Well, I can wait. For, are you in school? Yeah. All right. You sure? No, I think this is just bogus at this point. No, just... Are know. you just really... You're just really a little bit nutty, right? Uh, Will you gain weight if you get pregnant? No, I mean, after... I know I'm going to gain weight with the baby, but mm -hmm. am I going to lose you, it after? You've got to have bulimia, too. Bulimia? Yeah. Oh. Um, I was anorexic for Yeah, there we go. Peace, come on. You, yeah. you shouldn't be raising a hamster. You understand? But I thought maybe it'd make me more mature. No, no, it won't. No, You'll destroy no. another blood. You want to be more mature, you wear more Not mascara. Not only will your life be destroyed, but the baby's will. So. And mine, too, because I'm going to have to pay for everybody. <laughs> you would pay for my baby? Yeah, I'd, I'd would pay you pay for, for my I'd, abortion? I'll pay for the abortion. I would. Truly well, I'll pass the hat here. Yeah, we would. Well, I mean... But listen, I need three estimates. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, like you work on your house like you backed into my car or something, and I need <laughs> I need to go to the body shop. All right, listen, peace. Go down to Planned Parenthood and throw yourself uh, on their mercy, would you please? Yeah, Do get it to, tomorrow. Get Come on, baby. You, you got to get some counseling. Yeah. All right, you've been through Do a I lot. Need yes. Yes. Oh yes. my God. Yes. Everyone needs counseling. But, Everyone but me. But no one more than peace. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Man. God bless those hippie parents. Oh, they did a wonderful Great. job. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, parents. Oh, yeah. goddamn hippie parents. <laughs> I I had a hippie parent. They're horrible. They sit around, smoke weed all day. <laughs> <laughs> sit in the room and yell, "Freak out!" <laughs> all, all sorts of plans about the man. Don't stand too close to the microwave. It'll give you brain cancer. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, you're, they're screwing your brain in many other ways. Oh yeah. my God! Are you kidding? Yeah. But, uh, my mom thought everything would kill you, except for the one thing I actually should have done was put some goddamn sunblock on me when I went out. That's the <laughs> only thing she didn't do. 
Everything else, the fluoride in the water was going to kill you, the microwave's going to kill you, the pillow was going to bend your spine. All the stuff turned out to be nothing. There's one thing she could have got paranoid about that I would have actually thanked her for. That would be a little pab of cream on my head before I went out. I feel bad, man. Got my none mom, of that. My mom said everything would put my eye out. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah dude. That's normal mom. That's a yeah. good That's mom. break your neck and put your eye out. Yeah. yeah. Mike, my mom said the man would put your eye out. <laughs> <laughs> she hated the man. Don't Ooh. have oral sex. It'll put your eye My, out. Oh, yeah. boy. Mike. Hey, um, I had a question about masturbation. Yeah. Um, If you masturbate when you're sick, does it, like, prolong your sickness? No, because, I, I, you know, I did it when I was you know, sick, and it actually healed me. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. flush out the evil toxins. Yeah. It, it, you know, your body is trying to preserve resources to fight the illness, and you are sort of losing some chi, as it were, when you masturbate. <laughs> well, but but there, yeah. I don't know of any evidence that it actually prolongs the illness or changes the course of the illness. However, you know, if you're feeling well enough to be able to do that, and very few things take the wind out of a man's sail, but yeah. if you're feeling well enough to be able to do that, it's probably safe for you to do that. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Nothing wrong with self-love, Mike. Nothing, Don't let nothing stop that. your self-loving, man. You know. Thanks, man. All right, Mike. Bye. All right. But, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's probably he's strong enough to beat off eight times on a Tuesday, <laughs> but he can't make it into school. Right, of course. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm too, I'm too tired, Mom. I can't make it. That yeah. peachy folder's so heavy. <laughs> Cleo? Yeah. You're 23? Yeah. Okay. What's up? Um, about two or three months ago, about. I started having dreams about my father doing things to me sexually mm -hmm. fantastic and um i don't remember barely anything before fourth grade and i just i don't know i mean if it i don't know if it means something or well, it means you ought to just look into things a little bit you know you you know something's going on well where's your dad now in the house he's in the house what, yeah. what do you remember about him? I honestly don't have any memories of him before, like, fourth grade. How about after fourth grade? Um, well, there's all the name-calling and swearing. and. So he was emotionally abusive as well, right? Yeah. yeah. To uh, you? I'm sorry? To you? Yeah. Mm. And, and your mom. Hey, but you, know, are you, you bitch! Are you in college now? That wasn't. That was the Not old. Not yet. Life. Not no, yet. Actually, right my now. My mom was also emotionally abusive to me. Your mom was. Are you, are you in? School? Are you living with are you, them? Are you working? What are you doing? Um, I'm on disability right now, but. Mm, I, right now. Mm. Right. Yeah, hold so on. We gotta. We gotta explain to our guests. Right now. So it's uh, always the worst answer. Like like uh -huh. what? Ask me what I do for a living. <laughs> what do you do for? What do you do for a living? Um. Well, right now, <laughs> <laughs> like it's going to change. Right now, <laughs> you, you're not a doctor, attorney, or heading up a Fortune 500 company. She if said you start she, with she, right now. And she said she a twi little twist. I said I came right out with the disability. Well, I'm on disability right now. Yeah, it was only oh, twist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. but if you say like you're going to college, uh. R right now, <laughs> so he's not going to Harvard. He's not on the dean's list. You, yeah. You're the right now. Right now is usually followed by junior college, some junior college store working. Or, or disability. Temporary, temporary disability, disability okay. something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cleo. Yeah. So, listen. So right now. Right now, you're living where? At home. At home. Here's your first order of business. You get off that disability. What do you want disability for? Uh, depression. Depression, of course. Oh, okay. Of course. Get yourself a job. Find your way off that disability and move out. Yeah. You have any friends, Cleo? No. Right now. You got to. You got to get some friends. Cleo. Yeah. Listen to me. I know why your dad's a pain in the ass, your mom's a bitch, and all that kind of stuff, and they brought you down. But you just collecting a, a meager check once a month and sitting at home and sort of melting into the sofa is going to kill you. You you got to make yourself move. Yeah, right? you got to get what, some sunshine. What baby. meds you taking now? Meds. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, Effexor, Neurontin, Clonazepam, Lorazepam, PRN, Terzon. Put that all in the beer bong. You take it in the morning. Do Do you have a borderline personality disorder? You got it. Yeah. Borderline is a tough. Um, yeah. Tough diagnosis. It's tough to work and stay out of hospital. All right. Well, let, let's let's talk about this for a second. That, 
Cleo's in bad shape. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of people out there that are in somewhere between sane and Cleo. Yeah. And um, also and, on disability. Yeah, and there's a, just a lot of just general depression out there. And the problem with depression is it's it's like arthritis. It it stops you. It's hard to move. I mean, I was depressed for years. It's hard to get up. It's hard to get out. It's hard to move. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't have to uh, go to work or I would go hungry, I would probably would have just stayed in bed. I mean, yeah. if a check would have come in, even if it was just enough to buy a can of beans and pay the rent, that would have been it. I wouldn't have moved. Yeah. And I think, and, it, and, and, and I know it's, it's a weird sort of uh, catch-22 thing, but as painful as it is, you have to force yourself to move. I think, the, in, I think in a there's way. something to that, but but old Cleo here is a little more complicated. Well, she's than, she's a little further down down the yeah. road than than most. Yeah. But I, I'm talking to all those yeah, people, yeah, not the in between. Uh, not necessarily uh, Cleo. You got it. You got to set an alarm. It's got to go off mm. in the morning. You got to get up. You got to you got to do some push-ups. You got to break a sweat. You got to go to work. You know, just you got to just life. move. Yeah, try and to enjoy Cleo, life. Even well, if you don't enjoy it, just physically participate move, yeah. in it. And Cleo act like you enjoy it. Get some That's what I'm doing now. Maybe some, you know, <laughs> some volunteer job. Or kind of like work at the, at the animal shelter or something. Somewhere, you know, where you can just get some yeah. feedback. She's just active. Yeah. Active and some feeling of worth in what, what you have to offer. And uh, so many people we speak to are living in the place that was the abusive place. Oh, and and oh. whereas everyone else I know was out of the house at 18 or 19, they're, and, and there. didn't mind the house. Mm -hmm. They're ironically 23, 24 and still there. And they hate their folks. So there's yeah. a weird uh, weird dynamic that goes on there. But all right, Cleo, take care of yourself, please. Yeah, take care. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, Jay and Paul are both here from the real Cancun, which is uh, out in theaters as we speak. Last week was the first week. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Jane Paul are in studio tonight. Jane Paul are from the real Cancun, which is out in theaters uh, nationwide as we speak. Jane Paul are uh, two uh, good buddies. Met uh, when they were kids, right? Yeah. Yep. Out yep. In, uh, yep. in Inglewood, out yeah. here in uh, California. Yep. Went off to... Separate colleges or same college? Separate, Separate. college. Which which uh, would you go to, Paul? Uh, mine, I went to Xavier University in New Orleans. And uh, Jay? I currently attend El Camino College. Out here? Yeah. Uh-oh, junior college. Right? Yeah. And uh, you guys, uh, well, Paul been trying to do the real world for some time, right? Yeah, I mean, just submitting tapes and that kind Loser. of stuff? It's just, uh, How many on. years did you submit tapes? I never submitted tapes, but well, I've been going to open casting college for like the last three years. And, since I turned 18. And when you found out about the casting call for the real world, or the uh, real Cancun, you got Jay, and you went down there to check yeah, it actually, out. Actually, I, I needed a ride, so he had the car at the time. Huh. So. <laughs> now, we're, you were out here from, oh, well, what were you doing out here? Um, I was on uh, taking a break from school because I owed $3,000. Right now, let's see, you got to start. <laughs> you got to start. And then, so you owe the money, you owe the school money, so you, you, you're back here temporarily. Yeah. Are you living at home, or what are yeah, you doing? just me and my mom, stepfather. Back in a beautiful Inglewood? Yeah, and right now we're just, just doing the publicity for the movie right now, and then if it carries on, then if Is Xavier outside Baton Rouge? Is that where? You got it. It's uh, New Orleans, yeah. yeah it's, it's not really New Orleans, though. It, yeah, it's like deep in New Orleans. Oh, like, right by, you know, Bourbon Street and all that. It's deep in New Orleans. Then you have Kenner and... Xavier College? Yeah. It's a small, oh. it's a small black university. Oh, really? Because there's that the big one in the in it's in the, Ohio or something. Yeah, right? everybody yeah. says that. Like, oh, that's yeah. Xavier. Yeah. yeah, everybody thinks I'm at that one, but I'm not at that one. Mm. How hard one. is it to get in a black college if you're black and you just go? Extremely hard. No, it's not hard at all. It's not hard at all. As long as you have a good GPA, it's okay. So why are you not in school? Because I owe money. money. He owes money. Uh, that's yeah. just a trick to keep him down. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're bad with paperwork, I tell you that. But that's, that's their downfall. Only with your paperwork. Yeah. Man, I, I was, uh, I mean, I've been in New Orleans, and then I went on this parade that went uh, out of New Orleans and sort of yeah. through, the, through the back streets uh, of oh, Louisiana. Yeah. It, it gets pretty dicey or pretty rural pretty, pretty I mean, quick out those, there. Those float parades go out of New Orleans? They keep going. Yeah. What do they call those Mardi groups, the, the clubs, the little... 
Uh, the clubs that they each have their own king and stuff. I I, I, I don't know. There's I a million been, parades you know. over there. Yeah, yeah, but each one is by a club, like it's a little. Yeah, by a, it's they a these these parades these parades literally go down side streets yeah. and turn around cul de sacs and like come back. <sighs> And yeah. there's these fat, toothless people just out there, <laughs> and they have parade ladders, you know? They have these ladders. They're like A-frame ladders with high chairs on it, yeah. and uh, yeah. and there's like they got their five-year-old up there, but he's holding a sign that says, like, bitch, show us your tits. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, the thing that was funny, uh, I told this to you before, Drew, but we were last-minute fill-ins for Tommy Lasorda, the uh, Dodger oh, yeah. manager, the guys are me and Lasorda. Jimmy. Yeah. And they didn't change the beads with the medallion of Tommy yeah. Lasorda on it until the beads of Adam and Jimmy. So we were up there just... And people go nuts for these beads, yeah, and it's yeah. fun. But I mean, I'm almost like tore a rotator cuff <laughs> throwing those things because yeah. you're just sitting up there... I think that's funny. I'm in a pirate outfit. You know, like, it's not that, like, I work on a pirate show or anything. It's like, you're in a parade. You got to pick a theme. Pirate yeah. is the most popular. So yeah. next thing you know, you're in this crappy pirate outfit, <laughs> and you're up there. And if you like throwing stuff, and as you know, I like to throw things, sure. yeah. you're up there. You're 15 feet above the street. Everyone's down below you, and people are going nuts. Yeah, they the want beads. them beads. They want yeah. them beads. And they're in the back of pickup trucks that are in parking lots, like 40, 50 yards off, off the route. And the guy will see you and they'll start waving. He'll be like, yeah, I don't have a basket or something. And you're just, hey, you'll throw the thing. It'll go way around. It'll hit somebody else. It'll yeah. bust. It'll land on a roof. You start getting out of range, too, because it's moving real slow, you know. Yeah. So you start, you do another effect where you start winging them and let it let it go like it's uh, like you're uh, David trying to, uh, yeah. s- trying to slay Goliath. And uh, it's good times. But everyone would grab the beads and be like, yeah. And then they'd look at it and they'd see Tommy Lasorda's picture. <laughs> And they could never quite figure They'd be out like, what wow, was going Tommy on. Wow, Tommy Lasorda got skinnier. Yeah, but it didn't even <laughs> yeah. look like the 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 badge didn't even look like Lasorda. You had a little too much fun. And, and, I had a good time. I was dressed like roots. I was dressed like a pirate. Yeah, it's good. It's good to bean people with beans. Uh, with oh, beads too. Thank God, it's like 180 degrees. Yeah, right very there. hot. Nicholas. Yeah. You're 21. Mm-hmm. What's up? Well, uh, I got a bit of an acne problem, and it's not on my face. Mm-hmm. It's on my back. And chest. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, the back is the most difficult one to treat. It um, is. You are not kidding. Yeah. Why? The, mo- the, most of the treatments don't work. <clears throat> no, they don't. Have you tried Accutane? Yes, I've tried everything. Oh, boy. Nothing. You got a wow. good woman? Huh? Good woman will help that. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. You get at it. <laughs> women will get at it. <laughs> women, women, will do, women will look at you and go, ooh, and then 10 seconds later, they'll go, oh, let me get that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just say, ooh, then leave. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's got to be a little weird, like when you're taking your shirt off if you're yeah. with a woman for the first yeah. time. How long are you on Accutane for? Uh, huh? How long are you on Accutane for? Uh, I wasn't on it long. How long are you on it for? Uh, probably about six months. Have you tried, uh, like, UV light? Yes. I've tried tanning booth. Yeah. Nothing works. Does, does, it, does, it, does it help at all? No. Doesn't, doesn't make... It's after I turned about 16, 17 years old, mm-hmm. everything I tried just irritated it. Made mm-hmm. it worse. My goodness. Ooh, man. Uh, my doctor, mm. told when I was about 16 years old, told me that I, it was on my back because I had long hair. Hmm. Oh really? Well, well, that's, that's, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Yeah. Well, yeah. He said it was because I have not, you know, my hair was naturally greasy and nonsense. Uh, greasy. <laughs> Greasiness has. <laughs> Hold on, I'm picturing, I'm picturing a giant zit with a mullet on top of it right now, like, <laughs> and a pair of those like wraparound blade sunglasses on the front. <laughs> I mean. Uh, is that what you guys are seeing? I'm just imagining who this doctor is told him was greasy hair. I know, greasy hair. Yeah, don't go bad. back to him, man. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. That is don't seriously go back to him. Yeah. Stuff. Throw, away, throw away his numbers. Throw away his number. Yeah. Did, you, did you cut your hair after he told you that? Uh, a couple years later. It took a couple Do years. Yeah, HMO. A couple years. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a shrewd move there. Well, um, I, don't, I don't know what to do. The only thing that's even come close to clearing it up is an old Indian woman I know told me to use egg whites. 
egg whites. Egg whites. <laughs> All right, well, what what can you do topically? Like that that uh, that oxy tan will dry them yeah, up pretty good. Yeah, benzoyl peroxide, but it doesn't work too well on the, on the back. Uh, it's there, hard there's, to get there are it things back like here. retin A and whatnot, and there's Accutane. I think he he might want to go get a consultation maybe at a university derm- dermatology department. See if there are things they can maybe inject steroids in there sometimes. Sometimes there are hormonal manipulations they can do. You, you need something fairly advanced for this, though, Nicholas. And it, it sounds like uh, the kinds of available resources where you are are not so hot. All right. What do you do for a living? Me? Hey, uh, I work for a farmer. I'm farming. Farmer. All right. All right. Maybe, maybe you work uh, with your shirt off. Yeah, scratch up against that salt lick. <laughs> Let the sun let the sun sort of beat down a little bit. And see sun that, sun do it good, right? Well, sun no. will control it, but then it makes it worse afterwards because it like kenifies the skin. So. You know, the worst part about the back zit is not being able to get to it. Yeah. Somebody's got to invent a back zit popper. One, <laughs> another great opportunity for you here, Adam. It's nothing yeah. worse than maybe the heated couch. Know, get to sorry, they get the back scratching now. The zit popper, you know, they'd be in the game. Yeah, it could be like a. Could be some that you mount with a suction cup on your bathroom wall, you know, yeah. that you, you you lined up. Maybe some kind of laser sight that went over your head. You can line the zit up and then just lean back into it. You know what I'm saying? You get some bananas, mush it up a little bit, throw a little flour in there, mix it up. A little milk. I'm telling you, man, I'll take that right away. R- bananas, milk, and flour? I'll take it right away. No. Really? <laughs> what, are you trying to make a cake? Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Really? I'm telling Have you. Have you done that before? No. I'm just, <laughs> no? I'm just right. giving suggestions. No, <laughs> <nothing>. <laughs> That's why he's in junior college. <laughs> Abby? Abby? Hello? You're 23. What's up? Hey, uh, first off, I want to say I love your show, Adam. I love all your shows. And uh, Dr. Drew, you probably got you got a real you got a real nice voice. I heard you, well, singing it once, I heard you on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. You heard him he singing. He's got a nice voice. Yeah, he's got a great yeah. opera voice. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Anderson. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hear it again, Abby? Uh, why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, there he it's is. perfect timing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you brothers like opera, right? That's your music, right? <laughs> no. Uh-huh. Nah. <laughs> well, it's just... your thing, right? Every time you guys pull up in one of those Escalades, I hear this blaring in front of me. I know. Uh, uh, what's, the, what's the big dude's name? For the cello or something like that? What's that big dude's name? That'll definitely get the ladies. Let me say this. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to offend our guests, but I was driving next to a uh, brother driving an Escalade today on the freeway, and I noticed he had those rims that, that keep spinning. The free wells. The free wells. Kept, the free wells. Yeah, I kept, dream about those, man. Kept rolling. Kept rolling. Even when you stop, looks like you're moving. Mm-hmm. And I thought, uh, I know there's probably this is probably something that the black men are attracted to more <laughs> than the white men, and that's fine. They got no problem with that. But it seems like a bad idea with the cops here in L.A. Yeah. They tell you to pull over. They come walking up the car. They look down. They see the rim spinning around. Next thing you know, there's guns, yeah. gunshots. Yeah. It's the kind of thing maybe the Jews should get into, but I don't know about the blacks. It seems like it's it seems like a recipe for disaster. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Like, like you could use those rims with a pair of pants that made it look like you were running when you were standing still right, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I'm just saying, think yeah, about it. I'm I not know. trying to be offensive, hey, but hey, there's a lot of there's, a, there's bad cops out here. Yeah. They walk up, they look down, they see that thing. Yeah. Especially next in thing Cobra you know, City. Yeah. Next thing you know, they think you're fleeing. Hey, watch your mouth, man. <laughs> Even when the car's distilled, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, think about that, Drew. And <laughs> hizzle for shizzle, Dizzle. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those rims, those are nice rims. Yeah, very expensive, too. They're going to cause accidents because I was st- I was hypnotized by this guy's <laughs> yeah, rims I while that. I was on the freeway going 80 next to him. I was just uh, staring at them, really? like like mesmerized. Could you tell that they were still... I immediately yeah. knew something was going yeah, on yeah. with the rim, and I'm sure it looks better when you come to a complete stop and they're still rolling. But even while the car's rolling, the rims yeah. are kind of turning the wrong direction and stuff. Yeah. All right. Then the cops started shooting at him because even though he was going 65, the rims were going 180. <laughs> All right, I where, pull over. Yeah. Where were we? Speaking of Abby over yeah, here? Yeah. Abby? Yes. All right, so uh, now what's up with you? Uh, basically, uh, I love, uh, I, well, I look, you know, I view internet porn. Mm-hmm. And, uh, All right. Man, yeah, me too. Great, I'm man. a big fan. Don't, don't be ashamed, man. No, no, like Dave Chappelle said, I love internet porn. 
<laughs> basically, uh, you know, I'm checking out the porn. You know, I'm fondling myself, you know, pleasing myself or whatever. Uh, and I usually, uh, I usually start, you know, masturbating to the point where I'm about to, you know, where I'm about to bust. Right. But I don't, but I don't actually let myself go. Right. Uh, I do this for, you know, roughly, I'd say about 45 minutes, you know, more or less. I'll, I'll do this not every night, but I've been doing it for about, I'd say about a month now. Yeah. And uh, basically, every night. I, translation. My, not every night, about eight, no, eight, no, eight no, nights no. a week. <laughs> about eight nights a week. Not, not every night. No. Nah, I mean, eight, I nine nights a week. Not, not every night, but 14 or 15 nights. You know. Right. For, uh, uh, three, three, four times, uh, you know, uh, a Day. week. Right. Okay. What's the question? Uh, basically, I, I, you know, I want to know because uh, afterwards, I, I, I never, you know, you know, sometimes you know, I come to the point where, I, you know, I, or I actually bust, I let go. But uh, sometimes I don't. I basically want to save myself, I guess, for another day to let, you know, to make it feel that much more pleasurable. Mm -hmm. So I end up just taking a shower, I go to sleep, and you know, I, obviously my balls are aching afterwards because I haven't busted, sure. and it feels like I'm, you know, I'm about to come. And I just basically wanted to ask Dr. Drew if, uh, if this is healthy or should I be letting myself go when it? When yeah, you got to clean the pipes a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, man. The, the, that really irritates your prostate, and uh, not the healthiest thing to be doing. When, when, when your body's ready to have something come out of it, it kind of needs to keep coming. Yeah. Just make sure you have a towel next to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and by the way, yeah, that's a good point. Anything that's trying to come out, a baby, a cramp, a sneeze, some wee-wee, <laughs> semen, it's all got to come out. If it gets to that place, it's got to come out, right? Yeah, exactly. You try to grab it at the end, it'll hurt you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I always feel that way when those people that sneeze, yeah. you know, they pinch their nose off. Yeah, what is that? all the time, man. Oh, he's an idiot, this guy. What yeah. about sitting down and masturbating? I work with a guy who has uh, theorized that he's hurt himself. He beats off sitting down too much in front no. of the computer. Nah. Nothing? Nah. It's hard to argue with him, though. He's a smart guy. Is no there, damage? Is there a limit to how much you can beat off, man? There's a limit. Your body will sort of stop at a certain point. But, nah, you but sure? There's, there's not some sort of formal limit, like uh, oh, each okay. person has their specific I've number. I've went eight, nine, ten times. Yeah, you have not hit that limit yet? Nope. You gotta. You're, you it gotta gets to the point. It gets to the point where you get the feeling, but nothing comes out. You just. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. That's like yeah, powder. That's the limit. Yeah, yeah powder. <laughs> 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 All right, we're gonna take ourselves a little break. Uh, Jay and Paul here tonight from the Real Cancun. Yeah. We will uh, be right back after this. Hey, everybody, Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Jane Paul are here tonight from the real Cancun out yeah, yeah. in theaters as we speak nationwide. And uh, I imagine uh, our audience would be uh, the audience that would uh, go hit this movie. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, get back to the phones and speak to uh, young Ted, who's 17. Ted? Hey. Hey. Adam, I just want to say thanks. You helped me out this one time. I called because my dad was hitting me, and you're all like, go to the cops, and I did. Right. And we're in therapy now, and, you know, it's going good. Oh, good. When did you call? Oh, God, it must have been six months ago. All right. And, and when, um, was your dad drinking, or what was the situation? Yeah, you know, was sometimes he was drinking, sometimes he was just pissed. All right. And the cops got involved, and you guys went to therapy uh, together? Yeah, yeah, we got this family therapy going on. And how's that going? That's pretty cool. I mean, it's helping. All right, great. good. Oh, yeah, also, great, man. I don't know if you remember this. It was probably a year ago you were saying about the military for us uh, super tards out there that drink Mountain Dew. Yeah. Yeah, I joined up them. With, or I joined with the uh, Army. You did? Get yeah. on your knees, scumbag! <laughs> good. When are, you, when are you going in? I'm going to basic training this summer and then active duty um, after I graduate. Good. You just missed the war. I know, that's cool. <laughs> perfect timing. I know. <laughs> but yeah, don't worry, in a few years, no one will be able to do the math. Yeah. <laughs> Chicks will figure you're in there. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Oh. Tell them you took out Saddam <laughs> yeah. and Bin Laden. Yeah, but it was good that you called, man, to tell the authorities about your dad, man. Sounds like you're more happier now, man. Yeah. The, the, the Army brings me to the next question. Um, I'm going in next week to get a drug test. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering how long how long does weed stay in? I'll two. be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how much you're smoking, but if, if you're smoking every day for a few years, it can stay in a couple of weeks. No, I was I was maybe like four times a month. No, no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. In how long? 
couple are you weeks. Serious? Three, four days. Three, oh, four okay. days? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 It's you... Drew. Well, I should go hit it now. No. <laughs> <laughs> what what about, about Drew, what about if you urinate a lot? No. Doesn't do anything. No, no. different. No. So l- let me just ask this. Yeah. If I have, uh, let's say I got a drug test in two days. Mm-hmm. And between now and 48 hours from now, I'm just chugging tons of water. Yeah. And I'm just whizzing my brains out. Doesn't do anything to it. I can't say it doesn't do anything because you're obviously going to have a more dilute urine going in, but probably not a, not measurably or significantly. Better than not taking a leak for two days, yeah, though, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Cool. I heard uh, cranberry helps too. Cranberry juice. Yeah. It, it, here's the deal: if, if you adulterate your urine, we're going to know it, and then you got a positive test. Yeah, but you can what. say drink a bunch of cranberry, like cranberry yeah, juice. Yeah, well, the same as just fluid. Oh, All okay. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just go to give, the health store, you know. Give you a psychological edge going in. <laughs> All my friends, y'all heard that right? Three to four days. <laughs> well, that's if you're four times a month. If you're a daily podcast, your friends gonna weeks. be two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> college buddy. I yeah. know what goes on. Yeah, we take them to the, the health store though. Stay off the pipe. Yeah. Like I've learned that if somebody owns a hacky sack, we just turn them away. <laughs> yeah, Drew actually checks the, in, the instep of their foot. If they see hacky sack oh, wear no. on it, mm-hmm. they Done. go right into the right into the druggy bin. Wow, Maria. Hi. You're 19. I'm 19. What's up? Um, I am right now. I've been with my boyfriend for about eight nine months, and um, he's the second guy I've been with. And um, the problem is. We just recently have started having sex, and um, when we have sex, um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's kind of like um, it gets so wet down there that he doesn't feel anything or I don't feel anything. Right, it's yeah. It's not normal. Well, it's, some women have this. You're like, you're like, yeah, you're. The, yeah, he doesn't have the LD. That, that's What's the LD? Latter Day Saints. A large dick. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> he's just he's a little pond just swimming in a big ocean. That's really? Like, yeah. Is he is he small, Maria? He's he's um normal. He's even normal small. with these women that have excessive secretion can sort of not feel anything. Is there yeah. any way because uh, I my partner before, my first boyfriend that I had, um nothing it was nothing like this. And this the man I'm with right now is much larger than my last one and I don't know if that's the difference or are you well, more into this guy? What was that? Are you more into this second guy, the new guy? Um, not really. Are you on any birth control pill? <laughs> no. Nice. Are, are you on Hope any he's listening. listening to this. Oh, no. Hope he isn't Average listening. dick, not really. You know. <laughs> are you on any medication? <laughs> any medication? <laughs> well, the, but this guy, this, this guy you're with now is bigger than the first guy, right? Much, much bigger. And but yet, yet you didn't the have the this. The other one was as big. Yet he, I mean, she felt the first one. Yeah, um... Yeah, a little bit. More than the second one. The second one, it just... It just yes, it just... Which, just please answer the track question. with us, please. Yeah. Okay. The you, first one you felt more than the second one. Um, yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. Then that seems strange. He yeah. was significantly smaller. She's not more yeah. turned on by the uh, new guy. No. Yes. Does he have bad breath? <laughs> not on medication. <laughs> no. And maybe I that's just her as she's gotten older. This are are you... Are you creating much more fluid than you were with the first guy? No, no. All right, hold on, hold on a second. How could that be? Let's just do, let's just do the uh, <laughs> coos like, math the here for a second. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Here's what Maria uh, said to us thus far. Yeah, I have a lot of fluid. I have yeah. a lot of fluid. I had a, I've been with two guys. <laughs> the first guy was significantly smaller than the guy I'm with now. The fluid level was the same. But a lot. But a lot, but yet I had much more sensation with the first guy, who was much smaller with the same fluid level than I do with the second guy, who's much larger. And I will remind you, her opening statement was, I create so much fluid that my boyfriend doesn't feel anything. Right. Now, fast forward till about three seconds ago, I said, are you creating a lot of fluid? No, 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 not a lot of fluid. She said that? Yeah. Maria. You're on the witness stand. Okay, so how is it... <clears throat> And I know you don't know, but are we correct in all these, this recount here? You are. I'm creating much more fluid with the second guy than I was with the first guy. All right. Well, then that that would be the answer. And that may I just, just be. I don't know how to calm it down, or it's. All right. You may not be able to. It may just you be you as you've gotten older. 
it may be that you're more into this guy than you realize or that he's able to sort of... Uh, yeah, it's do, the motion you, and you, ocean. Yeah, you may be having sort of a female ejaculation that's sort of filling How things up. How about you there. dump a little kitty litter down there, stop it up, like uh, like when the transmission uh, leaks are in, you, the, in are, the driveway? Are you multi-orgasmic? Um, no. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Multi, multiple yeah. orgasm stuff. But I don't you feel You are so anything. lucky. Yeah. But you're still having... Oh, I, 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 about, but are you multi-orgasmic? Yes. Yes, I am. But you don't feel anything? Not with him. It becomes so... Well, I could only make myself orgasm more than oh, once by myself. So, okay. oh, so you got to be by yourself. <clears throat> yeah. What if he gives you oral sex? No, oh, he doesn't. He doesn't like that. Well, I'm going to give you my number and you just go ahead. He doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> like the oral sex. All right, he be doesn't this, like it. I've never right, asked Here's him. the deal. Get him to do it. It may just be you as you've gotten older. It may be the relationship. It may be the way he sort of works with you. Uh, sometimes progesterone-containing birth control pills can uh, reduce some of this stuff, so you might think about that. doesn't so. sound like she's uh, quite in love with this guy. No. Who, she's just using him for yeah, his... Um, but he doesn't give her any oral. <laughs> uh, natural yeah. pleasures. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> All right. We got the guys from the real Cancun here tonight. You Jay and Paul both here. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jay and Paul are here tonight. They are from the real Cancun, which is out in theaters as we speak. You've uh, seen the commercials. The commercials are, uh, there's, there's certain things that remind me to masturbate. <laughs> commercials are one of those things like, hey, what time is it? Oh, yeah, it's masturbation time. What's going on? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of high girls. Sort of like a smell, huh? It's like, what, what, yeah. what is that? What is, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's yeah. time to eat, time to eat, yeah. 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 The, the, movie, the movie encourages, you know, you know, interaction with other people and self-love. A, a lot of people were uh, saying that, now uh, the jig may be up a little bit that the parents now have a clear view of what's going on over there. But I would argue that, you know, MTV was doing their spring break thing for 12 years or I, something. I was down in Florida this year and um, never seen so many alcoholics and sex addicts in my whole life. <laughs> really? I mean, really? have you ever been to Cancun? Uh, am I right? Am I, is that, what's, who's there? Well, that, that's well, everyone in you spring call break. It, yeah. Right. I mean, it's incredible. Now, Drew, what are you going to do? Because your kids are going to go to college. They ain't going yeah. to. They're, they're, They'll they're, go somewhere, and there's going to be some uh, kind of spring uh, break. <laughs> they're going to spring break in Anchorage. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. It's, like it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's like, I don't even give you the proposal, huh? I don't even yeah, think about it. Yeah. It'll be fabulous. Really. But I mean, you know. I'm going to start a new trend. I need an eight page report from my kids on why you no, want to go to college. No, I just looked. I gave a talk at one of these clubs. I looked across at that. Oh, my God. Why am I even talking? These guys are all. They're always loaded, yeah. <laughs> loaded, and <laughs> sex addicted. They're like, like you know, trauma survivors. I just saw trauma all across the really. Whole body. That's yeah. good. And then when you have you know half naked girls walking around and alcohol, the two and two is just. Did they have? So they had a lot of wet t-shirt contests, a lot of uh, hot body contests. They have like the belly flop contest. <laughs> no, nah. oh, I nah. do enjoy the belly flop contest. Hey, hey, really I nice. figured you would. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, in Cancun, there's really not a lot of. Big people there. Everybody's petite. And, yeah, it was usually you know. they bring in a couple of ringers for the belly flop contest. But then once in a while, the skinny dude takes it. Yeah. Yeah. Skinny dudes win a, a disproportionate number of belly flop contests and hot dog eating contests. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Th yeah. There'll be there'll be some uh, Chinese guys, 135 <laughs> yeah, pounds. Yeah. I saw they beat the big black guy. I taking was like, on wow. like 400 pound guys and beating them in the hot dog eating, and then once in a while, a guy wins the belly flop competition. Skinny wow. man. Yeah. Like our skinny man, he won the hot pot. He in did. Our movie. Yeah. His name is Alan. So everybody's all cock diesel and Alan's skinny guy. Like a buck oh five. Yeah. And he won the. Uh, and he won hot the hot 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 Yeah. It's very See? funny. It's very funny. See, in the he movie. was he was loaded on on Jose Cuervo. So. Yeah. He and did some things that wowed the crowd. Is he the guy that said he would never he never yeah, drunk before? Yeah, that's the guy. Yep, you never got drink. it. So he never <laughs> he, he'd never been drunk before. <laughs> no. And then he started boozing when? How far uh, into it? Like the second day, man. Yeah, he, he, held day. Real, he held real <clears throat> strong, man. Yeah, because we were roommates too. They were, yeah, we were all roommates. And right. They're like, you're not going to take a drink, man? He's like, no, you know, I don't feel like I have to drink that good time. <laughs> and everybody's like, you're a punk, you know? You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with what you? Did, why did you even come down here? You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not going to drink. Why didn't you even come? And then I think one of the girls was like, I'll show you some boobies. You oh, take a really? shot, and, yeah. and he has a thing with boobies, so he was just like, <laughs> yeah. just took it. He's like, show me the boobies. And after that, he was just, <laughs> came on. Yeah. <laughs> now, was he a different person, drunk? Very different. It, I wouldn't say different. I will just say he was more, you know, Psychotic. like. 
<laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> he was more out there, I would say. Yeah, his no. confidence. Whatever. His confidence builder was like, boom. Yeah. I mean, when he got there, he was talking to me and him. He's like, you know, I can't get any girls. And, you know. He took that shot, and he was like, hey, baby, come here. Yeah. <laughs> you see this? I'm with the real Cancun. <laughs> you know you want to be in the movie? Come Taking a here. shower with three girls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> where, where was he from? Texas. Texas. Lubbock. Yeah. Lubbock. No, and, and so uh, the people came from uh, what colleges all over the country? Um, Georgia, Boston Texas Tech, College. Boston. Boston College. Uh, UNLV. Yeah. Uh, so it was a sprinkling of people from all, all over the country. Yeah, and I guess that's probably how they wanted it. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, keep going here and speak to uh, Kenneth, who's 28. Kenneth? Yeah. What's up? Hey, how you doing, Adam? Good. Uh, I got a, quite a few questions, actually. All right. Um, we'll dig this. Um, uh, here's the thing. I, uh, I, I, I was orphaned, and, uh, then I was adopted by my aunt. Uh, how do you get so, orphaned? Um, how do you get orphaned, officially? Uh, just, like, dropped off, you know? Um, Ooh. where'd you get dropped? About, well, my mom was about 15, 16 years old, you know, it was, you know, mid seventies. She likes to party, you know. So, uh, sure. She drops. She drops me off at my aunt's house. Right. You know, uh, technically, and uh, she leaves me there for about a year and a half. You know, and then I wants to come back and get me. And uh, my aunt says, "Well, look, I'm kind of attached. You know, uh, I, I don't really want to." So they go through this big court thing. Now, here's the weird part: is that there was rumor that my aunt actually. And I know this might sound far fetched, right? But my aunt actually paid the judge about thirty grand and put me in a body cast, uh, so that it would appear that you know uh, she was able to take care of me, so to speak, because she was going against a you know sixteen year old uh, you know burnout hippie chick, you know. Okay, and, uh, so well, let's just make sure we're on the same page. Mom right, drops you off at the aunt's house right when on. she's like uh, fifteen, sixteen. Right. Your aunt keeps hold of you hold on aunt excuse me how, how old the <laughs> aunt keeps hold of you excuse me auntie say aunt. how old is your oh, auntie sorry, the, is, the is auntie aunt keep, keeps aunt. hold of you how old the white she? guys say aunt the black right. guys and the english guys say aunt right how old was she the okay auntie. so your aunt <laughs> is how old yes my aunt was uh 30 30 so yeah. she's 15 years older than your mom right this is your mom's older sister mm -hmm. and she raises you for a year and a half Right. Then your mom wants you back. Well, you know, she just comes back and says, hey, he's mine. Uh, I came to get him, you know. Let's just say yes. She wants <laughs> yes. you back. Okay. Yes. Your, yes. your aunt does not want to give you back. Yes. So now there's a court battle. Yes. And your aunt puts you in a body cast? So I'm told. Well, so you don't you remember. Know, I mean, I, I was, no, no, here, here, here listen, listen, I was in a body cast, but... I was told that it was because I had a uh, dislocated hip when I was born. The doctor smacked me, dislocated my hip. This is what I was told as a child. That's an angry doctor. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no such thing as that. You can dislocate your hips because right. they weren't properly checked, and people, babies can have Wait. lax hip that can dislocate and cause arthritis, but you don't go in a body cast for that. No, right, but, and I would ask my, my, my aunt, my, my adopted mother, I would say, you know, why don't I have a scar? She said, oh, well, they did it with... Uh, with a Raj, you know, and, and, and but you gotta understand, I'm a kid, so of course I'm gonna, you know, believe what she's telling right, me. But what, what, how did your aunt uh, get a doctor to put you in a cast? I, I mean, I don't know, but I have pictures of me being in a cast with a bar between my legs, and I'm in a cast from like. Oh, okay. Other All right. Okay. Cast. Got right. it. I got All it. Right. Okay. So maybe All that right. was a legitimate yeah. thing, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So now she says she has to take care of you. So the okay, but yeah, okay. All right, just I mean, listen. It gets a lot. It gets a lot uh, more interesting. Well, so what's the court do? Uh, well, the court uh, gives my uh, my adopted mother custody, and I and I live with her. Okay. The adopted uh, mother's your aunt. The auntie, auntie right? Right, right, right. Oh, just call, call her that, please. Don't start swapping oh. titles. It gets confusing. Okay, okay, okay. So call her my aunt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So um, I got uh, my aunt got custody of me. My my. Uh, my biological mother, she, you know, uh, skipped town or what have you, uh, went ahead with her life. Right. All right. Can I skip ahead here? Say yeah. Sure. Yeah, please. go ahead. Please do. Actually, bring it all the way through to the time I'm home <laughs> beating off and drinking red wine. That's, it's about an hour and 25 from now. Okay, please. now listen. 
Okay, I skip ahead. All right, 18 years. Today, Junior? Mm -hmm. no, I'm getting to it. Listen, uh, skip ahead 18 years. Uh, we're in her apartment. Uh, she's tipsy. I'm tipsy. And she sits on my lap. And. Who, your auntie? She, Mom. Oh, no, well. no, my biological mother. She all pulls right. her skirt up, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. and places my hand on her ass. Mm -hmm. Now, I, 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 I do. I, 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 uh, I'm, at this point, I'm thinking like just. Just a, a male, right? You're how old? Oh, hell no. I'm 18. Sure, point. sure. We've all, we've all had a go in her mind. <laughs> now, listen, listen. Yeah. Uh, now, because I didn't spend a lot of time with her, it seemed like she was more like a friend of the family. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. I yeah. uh, I promptly picked her up and uh, took her into the bedroom. And rigged shot. And she told me, we should not do this. I'm your mother. Oh. And I said, you know, look, come on, baby. You know, we're... Sure. You know, I mean, it... You got your game face on. Right. Yeah. Right, I, right. Listen. Look, I understand. It's, it's the bottom of the ninth, and I got to hit a home run. All right? No, the, the, but the train was leaving the station. I, I got that. I understand. I've been there. Saturday night. <laughs> no, no. I you don't understand. You got a couple wine coolers in your mom's looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but We've listen, all been listen, there. We've all been no, there. Listen, this isn't, no, no, this. But but it's like the friends of family. It's not like uh, I mean it's. All right, yeah. so, all right, here we go. All you right. had no relationship with mom. Right. We get that. Even so, though so you have sex, been. you have sex with mom. Okay. Uh, but this is and by the way, I don't blame Kenneth. It, right? Hang on, right. hang on. It it, it it has to have some kind of effect on you in some sort of primitive biological yeah. level. A B. The, the really messed up person in this whole equation is the mom. Right. Yeah, because she was so. an adult when she, she gave. Hang on, hang on. Okay. I hear this okay. more. She was the adult when she gave birth to you. She saw you grow up. She knew you as a child, and here she is doing this crap right. to you as an adult. Right. And, she, and she had a relationship of sorts with you from an adult posh position. Here's, here's the twist. He gets her pregnant and gives birth to himself. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. That's All right, the so twist. then what happened? Wait, wait. Doesn't okay, work. well, listen. She, she, uh, she uh, came down with uh, 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 cirrhosis of the liver. Great. Right. She Fantastic. became a crack and heroin addict. Yeah, I was right. gonna say what well, the shorty and, uh, was. The shorty was a heroin addict. That's how she got the cirrhosis. And, the and chronic hepatitis okay. C. Okay. And did she pass along? Yes, she did. Okay. Now you got to get checked for hepatitis. Do you think how long ago? That? You think about that part? No. You how long ago checked. was this? Ninety-three. And you've been. You got to get checked for hepatitis. Yeah. Let's tell the tell the doctor you were uh, sharing a joint or something. You know, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't tell him. Don't that. Get the, your mom. You know, all yeah. the details, but yeah. But okay, but listen to this. Then my aunt told me uh, that that uh, that my biological mother's dad had an, uh, had a relationship with his mother. Now, when she told me this, I said, Wait, wait, wait. Bi biological mother's dad? Yes. Yeah. So her dad. Well, her dad undoubtedly was a piece of work. Right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. uh, All right, so Ken, listen to me. I'm delighted, you know, though. The you know how many medications I, uh, uh, I uh, do? All right, but listen, Ken, right. listen. I got, I got, a, I got a, <coughs> just a couple seconds left here, so I'm going to lay out a quick plan for you. All you right. you got to get checked for hepatitis, all right? Yeah. Just tell the doctor you had sex with someone you thought may have hepatitis. B, okay? and, B and C get checked for. B and C. All right. But doesn't this make me just quiet down? No, it doesn't trap, mean you're just trap. you're just a victim. You just you're got a victim, your victim. Yeah. You're a victim. You're victimized. Okay. Se sec look, look, sec quiet I? down. And listen to me. Secondly, you need to not have any kids. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. Oh, right on. All right. Third, you got to get some therapy. Some treatment. And well, then she's on meds. So. Okay. Fourth, stop beating yourself up. You got a horrible, abused life, and you get on with it. L got read, it read on stuff, with yeah. my mom. All read right. stuff out there about trauma survivorship because you, you are a trauma survivor all through and through. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think as a guy, like as, as, a, as a woman, and we talk to these women all the time, when their dad has sex with the daughter, this is, uh, they're victims, clearly. I mean, yeah. this happens all the time in society. You know, our hearts go out to these poor women who are vi clearly victims. But... When the son does it to the mom, we don't look at the son. First off, we don't hear it that much. And then secondly, we don't look at him as the victim because he's, he's male. the male. Yeah. And he's on top of the woman, you know. Yeah. But he is just as much a victim well, yeah, as yeah. they were. Here's what you have to think of. It wasn't, his victimization implies some sort of a passive paralysis and being, you know. What he was was exploited. Yeah. Right. And exploitation yeah. is a form of victimization. So. Exactly. All right. So, Kenneth, do not beat yourself up. No, not don't, at all. Man. Don't beat me up. 
Don't beat anybody up. Just mm -hmm. go to the doctor one step at a time. Annie? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Um, okay. Every time I get around a guy I'm extremely physically attracted to, mm -hmm. um, I have a physical reaction, nervous reaction to the point where, um, I, one, I fainted last year and I went to the hospital. Mm. And two, like, I, I break out in hives. Um, mm -hmm. My teeth chatter. <laughs> and it hasn't always been like this, but it's probably been like this since I lost my virginity, I'd say. How long ago was that? Um, about a year and a half ago. Mm. So who was this guy you fainted in front of? <laughs> Oh, uh, it this, wasn't okay. This comes right after uh, saying, "Oh my goodness." Oh, little Jojo. <laughs> for you, Adam, you're wishing for somebody to faint. Say, "Oh my goodness," and then faint. Yeah. yeah. You mean when we're having sex? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I can, so I can finally get some anal. <laughs> That's why she had to go to the hospital. <laughs> it wasn't cuz she fainted. <laughs> no, you what were you doing with the guy when you fainted? Okay, I I had met this guy. Um I had seen him before I met him for weeks at school. Mm -hmm. And I was just very physically attracted to him, and I had a class with him, and we oh, never really okay. spoke. We just said hi or whatever. And mm. one day Exchange I talked notes. to him, and I turned really red, and I calmed down, and I, I broke out in cold sweats after class had started. And then I stood up because I had to, you know, make a little speech or whatever for my sociology class, and oh, I fainted <laughs> in front that of people. God, feels like a champ. People. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, this is like a swooning thing. Did he know that it was because of him? No, everybody thought, you know, oh, maybe she hadn't eaten, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, you know, all, all my right. closest friends found That's out good. what was yeah. Well, it wasn't embarrassing. No, though. not too embarrassing. Yeah. No, I mean, it was. Humiliating, but not embarrassing. Well, it's humiliating, but you didn't, the guy, the class didn't know it was because of the guy. Yeah, no. they just thought you were nervous because of the, your speech. That's all. Yeah, but I mean, even like, like the first guy I slept with, I, you know, right before it happened, I started shaking so bad, it freaked me out, and it freaked him out because he didn't know what was wrong with me. Okay. Are, you, are you having panic attacks or any, any other kinds of anxiety symptoms? That's the only, well, that's the only time I freak okay. out. Okay. Like right, what maybe about you're developing a panic disorder. That you're right in the right age group for that to start happening. True. If you're going to get that. Yeah. What about stuff like taking uh, taekwondo or something? I mean, what if you got involved yoga. in some sport that calmed do, you down, I, that I gave do you yoga. confidence? Yoga, all right. Yes. Three times a week, and it's great, and it's very, you know, calming. But and it went away for a while. I'd say like the last six months, I was doing okay. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, like lately, there's another, there's another guy that I think is really attractive, and you know, I don't even think he's straight, but it's just his physical, <laughs> like. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> well, look, here's here's the thing about guys. We don't mind if you're a little embarrassed or you turn a little red in front yeah. of us. If you like us, it's it's nice. It's yeah. flattering. Very We're flattering. not going to worry about that. No, yeah, it's not, it's not like a woman where a woman wants the guy to be confident and not have those sorts of reactions. Guys have none of that in them. Right. They're fine to see you. Yeah. Uh, Just with a be, smile. Yeah. They yeah. prefer you to be vulnerable. If a woman sees a guy and his teeth are chattering and he's looking down at the at his shoes, they it's might a, they might be turned off. Uh, yeah. Might be. Or think Probably be turned clear. off. Yeah. 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 Right. But if a woman is a little nervous, like she's meeting a rock star or That's something, cute. Yeah. we like that. That's yeah. cute. So she needs, uh, Annie needs to first just realize that don't worry about it. Yeah. She may be embarrassed. The guy's not going to be embarrassed right. along no. with her. It's a good thing. And, uh, it's uncomfortable, but it's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> just say, uh, you know, maybe a little therapy or something. Just she, write she it out. Have, just pay attention. Right. If you really start having panics, it may be something that need to be treated. Aaron? Yes. You're 28? Yes. What's up? Um, I've been on methadone, and I need to know a, a good way to get off besides the way they want me to. They, the gave, you, they gave you that for heroin? Originally for Demerol, and then I got into heroin, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, why do you want to get off? A number of reasons, but basically I, I hate the clinic. I, I hate their their philosophy. Um, they give me problems about my meds for other things. and What other things? I have panic disorder with agoraphobia, depression, and I'm in a wheelchair. Are you taking benzodiazepines? <laughs> yes. I know you, 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 you can't. You a, why are you in a wheelchair? Because you're lazy, or because something's wrong with your legs? <laughs> I, I was carjacked a while back. Oh, oh, sorry to hear that. What happened? It was a black man. <laughs> no, it wasn't a black guy. <laughs> no, it was skinheads. Skinheads. Oh, oh that's even worse. Worse than black worse. guys. Even yeah. worse. Even worse. If you can imagine <laughs> somebody worse than a black man, it is a skinhead. I know. God. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, sorry uh, listen, to hear that, though. If you're going to stay on the benzos, you might as well stay on the methadone. Why? Because if you're going to try to get sober, you've got to come off everything. And if you're on anything that activates that reward apparatus, it's going to change your thinking and create drives, make you unstable emotionally, and create a very... It's a very unstable situation to be on benzos when, you, when you've been on opiates. There's hey, sort of I no worse combination. I can't leave my house without the benzos. Well, then you might as well stay on the methadone. That's, that's my question. Why? What's your goal in getting off the methadone? If it's to get sober and to I really... I want to get away from the people there. Well, that's a bad plan. Yeah. Then go to a different clinic then. What, yeah. uh, what happened with the carjacking? What do you mean, what happened? They, it was a carjacking. Well, the uh, people get carjacked and aren't confined to wheelchairs. Uh, they... They hit my T3, T4, and L2 uh, vertebra. So you were shot? Gunshot? No, with the bats. They shattered it. Oh. And then, and so now what? Now are you you are now paraplegic? I have a Foley catheter, and yeah. You got a catheter? Yeah. And so from the waist down, uh, no feeling? Or? Yeah. And is there any... any uh, hope that uh, any therapy you're doing, any physical therapy, anything like that? I stopped it. You stopped it. Did, did they say you'd never walk again or? Hold on a second. I got to talk to everybody here. This isn't paraplegia. It, it sounds like between the drugs and between what's going on in her head, the wheelchair is a good place for her right now. I just mean for her emotionally. It, it seems like, I mean, she's been through a lot, no doubt. Yeah. But it seems like She's she in a wheelchair could. because of pain, not because of paraplegia. Really? I, oh, okay. I bet you that's what it is. All right. Okay. Where is she in uh, true line? Six. Six. Uh, six, yeah. Aaron, <coughs> are you in the wheelchair for what? For pain? Well, because when I try to stand up, I fall. <laughs> All right. Because it hurts? No, because there's no feeling. Yes, I have pain, but it's not... It, it's it's in what, my upper back. What do they want you to do as, as far as... Hey, what, uh, did you ever get victimized when you were younger? What does that have to do with anything? Oh, okay. Nothing at all, of course. Were you, were you raped or physically abused? Yeah. You were? Yes? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Who, who did this? Dad. Dad? Yes. Yes? I'm answering for you. All right, so. thanks. <laughs> uh, Aaron? Uh, no, I'm asking Drew. Yeah. You dating anybody? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No? No. <laughs> What's your favorite show? Uh, I don't watch TV. Crank Yankers. Oh, yeah. Good answer. Thanks, baby. No, Aaron, listen. <laughs> you you got abused growing up, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That That's that's uh, part of the problem of what's going on today. And it's something you got to look at or you got to deal with, all right? Okay. All right. I know you're angry. I know, I know you don't want to look at You don't at that. like men and all that stuff, but you gotta we, you gotta get going with right that. Right now, you're you're responding to everybody as an archetype. Everybody is abusive, Dad. That's all wired into your system now, and so you experience everybody's attacking you and exploiting you and abusing you. And the only way you can tell your tale of woe is through pain. And t understanding that is not going to change it, but yeah. there are ways that can, can be changed. I really I'm a no fan of methadone. But I don't think you're somebody to probably should come off at this stage of the game. All right. You're and a really good doctor. You know that? Oh, he, he's Very the good. best, this guy. Very good. He's the love doctor. You make me want to just <laughs> express myself. You know, I'm yes. having problems at home. And also, the, the people at the methadone clinic that are maybe telling you what to do or you don't like some of the regimens or things like that, don't listen to I them. bet it's Aaron. Of course. Of it course. is. Yeah. So come on, baby. Let's yeah. go. I mean, here, here's what ends up happening. These poor people that get abused growing up and then society ends up abusing them because oh. of their attitude and because of their disposition. You could hear how angry she was. You meet, yeah. like, you talk to her for 30 seconds, you want to start yelling at her. Mm -hmm. And this is a person that her dad probably did horrible things to them. But this then becomes their life. And I think we get angry, and I know we do on this show, but in general, when we, when we hear people sort of lying to us and lying to themselves a little bit, and I don't even know if it can be uh, classified as lying when you've been abused that way. But what we hear in Aaron is somebody that needs to go to physical therapy, that needs to quit BSing herself, that needs to get past whatever happened in the past and get into some therapy now she and start focusing on her sobriety. I can't for some of these newer therapies like EMDR, these rapid eye movement therapies and stuff to help people specifically through traumas that are stuck in that. So, All right. Cool. We'll uh, take a break. Jane Paul here tonight from The Real Cancun, and we'll be right back.
everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LV-191. Jay and Paul both here tonight from the real Cancun. It is out. It is uh, nationwide. And uh, it is in theaters as we speak. We will uh, hop back to the phones and speak to uh, Dwayne, who's 23. Dwayne? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I've got this hard... I'm not sure what it is underneath my nipple. It uh, it just kind of appeared there about two and a half weeks ago, kind of overnight. And do you smoke a lot of pot? No, not at all. Never. Are you on any medication? None at all. Is there anything anything coming out of that? Anything. anything coming out of that nipple? Nothing comes out of it, and it it doesn't hurt at all. I can push on it really hard, and I get no all pain right. whatsoever. Well, it, it's it's probably something called gynecomastia, which is just a a growth of the breast t- breast tissue, just like a woman gets. Well, it gets a lump under the nipple. However, men get breast cancer, too, and it is something that needs to be looked into to make sure it's not that. And even if it is gynecomastia, you need to figure out why you're getting that. That's something that can happen to 13-, 14-year-olds real commonly, but at 23, that's kind of a little older yeah. than it should be. Has it if been around I, for a while? If I push on weeks. it uh, mm. for a while, it'll, it'll get smaller and kind of go away, but then it comes back. <laughs> Yeah, you got to get this checked out. Is uh, you, you're on no supplements, no medicine, no nothing. No, nothing like that at all. I don't. I don't even take aspirin. All right. Um, all the right. only the only thing I thought maybe is I was working out a lot for a while, and then I went on vacation and I haven't since, and it's been about a month, and thought maybe it was like a hormone thing. Okay. Well, what did I just explain to you? Okay. Listen carefully. Could be breast okay. cancer. Could be. Probably not. It's probably something called gynecomastia. Yes, a hormone thing, but not physiologic. Something's causing okay. it, and you'd have to figure out what. Okay. All right. So you go to a doctor. Right. You get a man. It's not that you just stop working. You out. get a manogram and the, <laughs> the manogram. You stop, see? Too bad stop, manogram. stop pushing it, man. Too bad you're not yeah. doing the man show anymore. Yeah. The manogram. Yeah. <laughs> He's sitting there pushing the darn thing. Mm. Yeah, it's gross. It's squeezing it. Gross. <laughs> you know, if I, had, to, if I had a booby, I'd go yeah, at it. Too. Trying to milk his nipple. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay. Hello. You're 22. Yeah. What's up? Um, so my problem is that when I'm coming close to orgasming, mm-hmm. um, my hands, uh, well, my right one more than my left, starts to clench up mm-hmm. like it um, cramps. Mm-hmm. And then um, also my face kind of starts to go mm-hmm. numb. That, that happened to me once and I crushed the VCR remote. <laughs> I, was so, I was so tensed up that I actually, like the $6 well, million yeah, dollar man, that, uh, scrambled it porn, into, yeah. into powder. That's the yeah. uh, Jake Steed, free goes and flows. You know? So, uh, yeah, all right. That's your thing. Yeah, and it's kind of worrisome. I don't know. No, no, you, you're just kind of hyper, hyperventilating, probably. Yeah. I get that reaction all the time. Yeah, yeah. breathe. Yeah, just Slow, breathe, in. B- breathe, through, breathe out through pursed lips. Slow expirations, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. that's it. You okay. speak, why, why breathing out through pursed lips? It doesn't let it you down. hyperventilate? Yeah, it slows it down. Yeah. So you do that. Yeah. Oh, you mean it Pro- prolongs expiration. Well, oh, just okay. some, some sort of yeah. pursed lips, whatever yeah. you're comfortable with. Oh, the breath Y'all hear that, ladies, for all y'all out there? To, yeah. You know, breathe out through the pursed lips. Don't don't hold it in. Just Don't hold it in. Just let it all out. Lee? Yeah? You're 17? Yeah. What's up? Okay, I'm... This is really hard for me to say because he's probably listening, but I am very, very sexually attracted to a 40-year-old man. Mm -hmm. And it kind of freaks me out because I don't even know if that's normal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, if I don't... I don't know what's wrong with me. I, it's normal to I be. Him, listen. I had a dream about him the other night. I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> I'm really <laughs> horny. And uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what is your relationship with this guy? Well, I work boss. with him, but was he your boss? All right. Mm, I'm not gonna say. We'll, we'll go yes, yes right. unless yeah, he's we'll, the we'll world's biggest loser. Well, you know he's, he's listening, so just yeah. go ahead and get it out. Yeah. Working the deep fryer yeah. at forty. <laughs> <laughs> you, you having an attraction to somebody like that is completely normal. Him responding to it would be a problem. Right. Yeah. Like it's, he doesn't flirt with me or anything. Like he does, but it's not on the level that you want. It's yeah. not like he smacks yeah. my ass or did did uh, or did you oh. say he was married? Yeah. That makes he it even more exciting. What's hot about him? Is it his looks or what it's is it? It's actually his it's that whole gray beard. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's that cane he uses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that old pipe, you know. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, the way he strokes his long beard when he's thinking. <laughs> he actually Drew's 43, so watch out. He 
he has his stuff together, uh-huh. and he has his head on straight, and then he's got this, I hate to say this, but he wears these tight pants, and I can see his Oh, his, 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 okay, yeah, his, I see his, his kind of girl you are. Yeah. Um, not like that, but yeah, you know, uh-huh. you see it because he pushes it out, and I'm like, oh, God. He does his little hip thrust so she see it. Huh? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, he always tucks in his shirts. Yeah. So, so yeah. What is this a restaurant you work at? Got to be. Yeah. 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 I know I know guys who yeah. manage restaurants. Yeah. yeah. It's really weird cuz he's got these big old brown eyes and every time he looks at me I'm like Oh, I can't look at him. I'm like, I know you're getting moist. You're just like, oh, yeah. You sound like you're getting excited right now, aren't you? Yes. Do you uh, see this? Now, is, and, do, I don't, and I don't know. I can't see how that's normal. You all know right, what well, I mean? wait a minute. Wait see, there's a minute. still hope, Doc. There's is, still hope is, for you. Is, is, it that, uh, is it that he's married and kind of forbidden fruit? No, not fruit? at all. He's actually supposedly getting divorced. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's oh, what they tell everybody. Yeah. That's, that's I spread the story. that around my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we're getting divorced. His wife and I mean, stuff. He did I mean, not really cheating, but he's dating other chicks while he's married. And how old are those, how, old, how old are the chicks that he's yeah. dating? What's up? How old are these girls? How old? Probably thirty. One of them he was telling me about has two kids, so I'm gonna guess thirty. Mm-hmm. All right. So listen, Lee, do you want to get caught up in that mess? No. 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 All right. Just <laughs> All right. have your fantasies. It's fine. Go get a boyfriend. Yeah. Catch him in a dark alley. I don't know. I can't really meet anybody that I, I'm picky kind of. I have to see this guy like five times a week. I'm like. Yeah, but you're just you're you're, you're picking up momentum. Yeah. 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 And For a guy out. that and God bless women, they can do this stuff. You know. <laughs> I mean, what I mean is, what I mean is, you know, this guy's not great looking. He's kind of an idiot. You know, yeah. tight pants. They yeah. start building. Building a, mo- a case. Yeah. They start yeah. building a case and, for somebody. And if Lee starts talking to one of her friends, the friend will get attracted. Yeah. Right. It's like yeah. it's like they get. Con- You're right. He with is one cute. Of, oh my! I see what you mean. Then they start yeah. fighting over it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I don't know what it is with uh, guys who manage restaurants, but they're re- <laughs> there's the power. Guys. It's it just the power, power that he can fire you at any time. Yeah, you know it's even yeah. worse. He can demote they, you they from make flipping. You, they make to... your schedule. Yeah, <laughs> you want that Saturday night shift, baby? Or do you want to be here Tuesday afternoon with the truckers giving you nickels? So I make the schedule. They always make that announcement too. I gotta go I back and think about the I schedule. Get you, laid. you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make the schedule. So any anybody want to say anything to me in my office before we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Any guy who makes a schedule has chicks into him. Yeah. Even guys wanting to blow him. I, I'll blow a guy <laughs> if he's making my schedule. You know, if a guy, if a guy says, hey, Adam, either you're coming in at uh, noon or you're coming in at 6 a.m. I'm like, it's I, your you, decision. You need you a blowjob, buddy? <laughs> what do you need? That's, what, that's what's it going to take? Man. What's it going to take to get me in at noon? That's all I'm saying. What do I got to do? <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's talk to uh, Jim, who's uh, 27. I knew that guy was a restaurant manager. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. You're 27. What's up? She didn't say anything about restaurants. What's up there, Jim? Yeah. Hey. Uh, I uh, I just called. I took I take it about a sheet of acid and tonight. I, uh, no, no, no. I uh, it was about a within a month. I would take it two times a week. Right. Uh, Please don't laugh at me. All right. And uh, I don't. I used to just kind of mellow out, listen to Hendrix at the Doors and stuff, and just you know have a good trip. And sure. Uh, I, now I, I seem to be paranoid when I go outside. I, I it's hard for me to just even go out and mow the lawn. And yeah, this ju- the know. LSD will 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 damage your brain. There's no doubt about it. Man, let this. Stuff and go. there's something called a post hallucinogenic perceptual disorder, where you stay kind of locked into being high a little bit. You still fi- kind of feel like you're in a dreamlike state. Oh, all the time. Yeah, like yeah. right now, huh? And th- what happens in that post hallucinogenic perceptual syndrome is you start getting panic attacks and then depressed, and the depressions are intense. Well, what you, what the f could I do about? Well, you need to talk to somebody. You need to talk to a psychiatrist or an addictionologist who has experience with this, because it's a hard thing to treat, and uh, you need to get some help right away. Hey, uh, listen, I just want to say, Drew, I think you're brilliant. Adam, you're a genius. Thank you, yeah, Jim. Hey, but, but listen, get get in there, take care of this, buddy. Jim over here. Just yeah, here. but it, it, this this is a treatable condition, but it it's something that's going to need treatment ongoing. And uh, go take care of it because terribly the, the kids I've talked to that have this it is incredibly uncomfortable and it doesn't get better by itself. So people that do this do they have like a proclivity to to have panic attacks or whatnot? Oh, absolutely, panic and then really intense depressions follow. All right, 
Take care of it, Jim. All right. All right, thanks. All right, there you go, Tims. What's up? LCD? Is that what you call it? It's called post hallucinogenic perceptual disorder. No, what's LSD. It, what's LSD. LSD. Okay. Yeah, so wow. sh- okay. Let me uh, let me try to get to another uh, bottom of another black stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad one. He's gonna talk about oral sex. No. 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 I, I'm talking about hallucinogens. Oh. You know, the brothers aren't into the hallucinogens. <laughs> right. They no, ain't no. into it. No. Now they are into the weed. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing that's funny is is amongst the the uh, the cracker community, mm-hmm. the guys who smoke the weed in the CC, the, in the cracker community, yeah, yeah. The, CC, yeah. the guys who smoke the weed do the mushrooms yeah. and do the LSD right. as well. Then there are the other side of the cracker community who does the booze in, and those folks lean a little more toward the X and the Coke mm-hmm. if they're going to do a drug other than booze. Mm-hmm. Now the, That's true. The brothers, the BC, the black community, they smoke tons of weed <laughs> but never go into the mushroom and LSD thing. Mm-hmm. Nope. No. Now, it's weird because the equivalent white guy would be going into the mushrooms <laughs> yeah. because we like that kind of high if you're into that mm. sort of groovy high that pot high mm-hmm. then you go you the next step is yeah. is the mushrooms yeah. now what is that i don't know man it's it's just something that you know just the weed just doesn't relax. appeal i guess yeah i could say and then weed just does it but did but one black I, guy I, do it and tell everyone else it was no good <laughs> like did snoop come down from the mountain and go, listen y'all i i tried some lsd it's no good you got to get some gin and juice this is no good like how do they all know well i, I see know. in the in the, the african americans i try i see more pot and cocaine that's, yeah, but never, the never yeah. the LSD. No, and, 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 or not, the and not even. And, and the other thing that the white guy does is the pot. Then cracker. The, the, the cracker does <laughs> is the white than the speed. Right. Like the white, the marijuana than the speed. Right. And yeah. I don't see that in African Americans. And then some, some of it is word of mouth too. Okay. You know what we see from yeah, other. Yeah, it is word of mouth. A lot of it is word of mouth. The and brothers then, aren't too into the speed either, are they? Nope. No. no. Much. My experience once, and then somebody would be like, "No, nah, that wasn't. That wasn't good, man." Everybody. But the Xanabars. They like the Xanabars. What is that? Xanax. Oh, Xanax. Oh. You guys like the Xanax, huh? Yeah. All right. Some, some like X, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. again, that's Less so. Less yeah. So. Yeah. But the wheat, straight. No. Yeah. 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 There's a, a wives tale out there that that black males have larger penises. True, please. <laughs> yeah. That's completely inappropriate. How dare you? <laughs> All right, we're gonna take ourselves a little get, a little break. Uh, Jay and Paul are both here from uh, the real Cancun. We'll be right back yeah, after yeah. this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jane Paul are here tonight from the real Cancun, which is uh, out in theaters all over the United States. Go and see uh, it. funny movie. I'd Go say see it. I'd say if you like this show, you're uh, probably going to enjoy. That's probably going to be your thing. I think yeah. I think our our audience is prime prime prime, 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 prime for that demo. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get to a few more calls here and speak to uh, Ashley, who's 19. Ashley. Hi. What's up? Hi. Um, the other day, like it was on Saturday, mm-hmm. I went with my best friend Jenny. Yeah. Um, we went to Disneyland mm-hmm. for his sister's birthday, and we ate like probably about four and a half grams of mus- mushrooms each. Right. Not not black, right? You're white, right? I'm white, yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> That's my point. That's my point. I know. I heard the conversation earlier, and I didn't think you guys would put me on because I'd be talking about the same thing. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. I want it's to actually more of a reason to put you on if you really think about it. But, <laughs> but so you got okay. really high and you went to Disneyland and what yeah. happened? Well, normally I take I take mushrooms with Jenny. She's my best friend. Like we, we've been best friends for like five years. Yeah. yeah. You, you keep she using her name right though. She uh-huh. may not be your best friend after a while. Whatever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I don't know if she even listens to the radio, so it's okay. All right. Someone will but, tell her. Someone will tell her. Um, somebody will. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so she was with her boyfriend, and I kind of felt weird because, like, it's normally just me and her, and, like, I feel very vulnerable when I'm on mushrooms. And we were in Disneyland, and the last time I went to Disneyland, my parents lost me there for four hours. Right. And, like, I freaked, and I was really little, and, like, so I started freaking out because I was, like, I was tripping out anyways, but, and then I went back to where I was like the hotel that we were staying in and i i started feeling like i was dying and so for the past two days i've been waiting to die 
No, okay. that's, that's a panic attack. Yeah, I've had you're like having four panic. anxiety attacks. Yeah, you're having attacks. panic. And unfortunately, once you have panic, as you heard from that last caller, once you start having panic from hallucinogens, they keep going. So, yeah, yeah, but better, better, better f some mushrooms. Better than, mushrooms uh, than a bunch of acid. Oh, I'll acid. give you that. I'll give you that. But, but even pot sometimes will open up these panic attacks. Like a circuit gets open no. in the brain, and then yeah, panic lightweight, it's lightweight. Up. Well, actually, whatever, whatever. <laughs> okay, so done. but this has been a couple days. Yeah. All right. Uh, drink some green tea and uh, mellow out. No, it's, it's gonna go away. No, it's gonna have to be <laughs> yeah. treated. No, nah, give her a couple days. It's give gonna, her a couple it's days. It's going to need to be treated. Nah, uh, hold on a I second. Don't know. Uh, first off, <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to freak her out if you get into that talk, number one. Number two, look, give it a goddamn week before she goes in and talks to somebody. All right, I'll give her that. All right. Please, because mushrooms can screw you up for a few days easily. I mean, you can get really scrambled. What the hell was she, 19 at Disneyland? What the hell were you doing there? She, oh, well, that's the thing you do. You get high on the mushrooms. And go, go, to, uh, go, go on and get on the teacups, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just go spinning around. around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tr try screwing one of those one of those animatronic bears. <laughs> <laughs> go nuts over there. Everything's freaky over there. Isn't it? <laughs> Everything's crazy when you're high on mushrooms. I know drawers and everything. Yeah. Yeah, Ashley. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you, you had a bad trip. So here's the regiment. No more mushrooms. No more hallucinogens. Period. No more. All right. No, All right. I totally have fun every other time. Well, it's too quiet. bad. You're, you're done. You're, 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 you're done. done. Up. You, yeah, keep the habit. You have damaged yourself. You're done, Rob. Maybe, maybe you damaged yourself. Yeah. Did but, I? Now, let's just assume you didn't for the time being. But you will if you keep doing it. Right. Yeah. So, you got to maintain, baby. No oh, more of the drugs. Get to the weed. And if you're still feeling this way <laughs> uh, by uh, Monday, go, uh, go see a doctor. Yeah, it, this is treatable, and it probably it might need treatment. It might. Okay. You never yeah. know. Just give me a call. I'll fix it for you. Everyone I know is those <laughs> mushrooms gets a little. It's been a little weird for a few days uh, afterward. Yeah. yeah. Gotta wait until the high goes down. Yeah. No. Yeah. They're good. And Drew, you say you're, you're you're the man. You understand? You compound things when you tell them. <laughs> you tell them they're gonna they're gonna be this way for the rest of their life. <laughs> you're like, are you serious? Oh no. You just yeah. tell them good times. Good times. <laughs> yeah. Jessica. Oh boy. You're 19. Hello. All right. Hello. Call it. There she is. What's yeah. up? Hi. Yeah. Hey. Go. Hey, you on... <laughs> Sorry? Uh, okay. you're, on, you're on the cell phone. Uh, speed it up. Okay. Um, there's, like, lumps on my boyfriend's penis, and I was just, like, wondering, like, is that natural or... Those are his balls. <laughs> <laughs> no. What do they look they're like? They're under, right? What yeah. do they look like? Well, they're kind of, like, white... Sort of, but they're really small. It's probably the pearly penile papules, something we haven't talked about for a long time here. Where is it on his penis? Go like ahead. underneath, like right underneath the head. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Just put a little spit on it, he'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look like warts, though, right? No. Not, not little cauliflowers no. or skin tags or anything? They're like very small, but you can notice them. Um, or, like, if you run your hand across the Yeah, that's you know. probably the pearly penile papule, yeah, I bet just you. just a little slobber and he'd be okay. You clear that right You up. don't think it's a wart? Mm. Mm. Are they symmetrical? Uh, that's a big I, word for She her. doesn't know what not that means. Sure. Are they? I'm not sure. Well, here's... She hasn't brought her you know jewelry's loop You know yet. what a wart looks like? Yes, I know what a wart looks like. Do, these are, like, smaller. Like Okay, these. so then that's probably that. And a little yeah. slobber, he'd be okay. Yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah. You get a little slobber on there. Maybe a little dookie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll clear it up. Or just a bigger fish or fry. You guys love the dookie. Thing, you know? It takes all kinds out of it. It really does. Yeah, Quinn? Shoot. Hey, uh, You're 20. What's up? I'm up here at the Navy base in uh, NAS Lamar. I know how you get down. Yeah. And, uh, Where is that? NAS Lamar up in California. All right. NAS Lamar? Yes. Was that a city? Uh, basically. All right. It's called the NAS Lamar? Yes. Oh, okay. Naval Air Station. Oh, okay. The, Thank but you. that's not the city. What's the, well, the Naval city's Air in, Lamar. in Lamar? Yeah. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. Cool. Go ahead. I Quinn. got a, a PRT tomorrow, a physical requirements training. Yeah. And I got to run a mile and a half. And uh, my father in law was telling me this morning that if you uh, have sex the day before a large physical exertion, you get weak in the knees. He, yeah, just, he doesn't want you to bang his daughter, that's all. <laughs> Did you ever see uh, Rocky? Yeah, women weak in legs, remember? Uh, yeah. What's, uh, I don't know. That was the first yeah. one. I'm not just talking Raging Paul. 
Rocky. <laughs> it was Rocky. Uh, every every boxing movie. But listen, <laughs> Quinn, that's not true. It's probably BS. Yeah. Is, is it just BS then? Tell yeah. him. Tell him. Well, I don't uh, know. Tell him you're right, pops. I'm gonna have your daughter blow me. <laughs> 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 yeah, go ahead and break her back out. Man. I did that before I went to play ball once, and I wasn't right. Wasn't I, right. I yeah. couldn't catch a breath or nothing. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. What do you What do you got to do a mile and a half in? I have to run it in less than 13 minutes. Oh, you yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you're, you're good, good man. You can you're walk good. that, man. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. How much you weigh? Uh, about 185. No. Oh, yeah. Go ahead problem. and give her the magic stick. Yeah, she got the magic stick. You'll be fine. All right. Thanks. You know, Burgess, right. Burgess, Burgess Meredith is yelling at him. <laughs> Women <laughs> weak at legs. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. You're right. Uh, they they thought you got. I mean, this is something they thought for a long time that your uh, knees got weak yeah. from uh, being with a woman. Yeah. But now nothing. As a matter of fact, they think that uh, your testosterone levels go, go up, up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you're you know active, yeah. so you makes need sense. Yeah. So you need that as an athlete. Yeah, you do. All, All right, right, we'll take ourselves a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dr. Drew, that's the show, everybody. I want to thank uh, Jane Paul for coming in here no from problem. the Real Cane no Cane. Had a good time with you guys. Good yeah. times. Want to tell uh, everyone to go out and watch the uh, Real Cancun. If you uh, like this show, you're going to like that movie. It is in theaters as we speak. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Uh, you know how many medications I, uh, uh, I do? This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.